Well, all right, all right. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Fling Show this evening. Thank you for joining us. Mandy, we have a special guest for you this evening, and we're going to get to him in just a few minutes. But until then, we have a few things to go over. First, I want to thank David Himmelein. Always loving the music. I just love what you're doing right now. Thank you so much, Hemi, for the music in the background for that as well. Well appreciated. Also, started that video. Hope you all got to realize those are the sponsors that all sponsored Texas State Dubs this year. And I've, I've spoken at nauseam about this. I don't think that the sponsors get enough attention, especially for the ten tournaments that they're in. And, and without their help, these tournaments could not be done now. So I want to make sure that we recognize each and every one of our sponsors. So thank you all. Hope you all got to watch that video. We'll play that again at the end of the show before we leave because we just can't say thank you enough. And that tournament's going to be incredible. Um, speaking of incredible tournaments, as y'all saw last weekend, I had Chrissy on and what an event she had over the weekend. Let's think about this. This is January in Texas and you decided to put on an all ladies tournament in Austin, Texas. What's the likelihood of that tournament and that weather just being beautiful? If you're from Texas and you entered all the time, you're lying. You know, as well as I do, it could have been free, this free. Crazy freezing, but it turned out to be absolutely gorgeous. And what it turned out to be even better, if you look kind of down below me right here, I have a little elephant. I call it the elephant in the room. And as you can see, they not only had a great event there, they had 106 ladies turn out for their first event in this wildflower tour that uh, Chrissy Fountain, the group Stephanie Vincent, and them are putting on. And it is just amazing. I'm so proud of her. Congratulations. I know that when we talked to you last, you only had about 80 something and do 106. Hats off. Congratulations. Well done. Can't wait to see what you do for the rest of the year. So now let's get to the results. This is what's even a little more impressive. As you can see a little bit over here up on the top, that Miss Jill Norwich right there. Yes. She is not only the, the winner this weekend, over the weekend of the Open Division, she's also a team, team member of mine on my Winter League team. And I just got introduced to her. And what a field of ladies that she beat. On the bottom, you see another uh, lion down there, and that's Miss Nikki Wyatt. She is also one of my teammates on my Winter League team. And all those little blue panthers that you see right next on the other side, all of those ladies have been guests on the Fling Show. And look at how they finished in that field. Quite amazing. Well done, Jill. A hard-earned victory over the Go Des Redding. And we all know about Aria. My goodness gracious, that's another up-and-coming player. Stephanie's been on the show as well. She helped out with the tour. Of course, our own Chrissy Fountain. It's amazing you run an event with that many people and you do so well in your tournament. Congratulations there. Then you have Melody uh, Castrita as well. Congratulations to all the ladies there. So proud of you. So wonderful to see what you're doing down there. And I cannot wait to see what happens the rest with your uh, Wildflower Tour this year. The Fling Show. The Fling Show. Y'all want to know about the mystery of flight. You want to hear about the scene done right. So kill your TV and just come outside. We're gonna take you on a beautiful ride. The Fling Show. 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 Thank you, Lone Star.
record. Now that brings me to the event that we'll be uh, putting on in March. This is the Texas State Dubs. I tried to tell you folks, this tournament is just about full. Little secret, just a few minutes ago, I got to talk to the tournament director who I happen to know very, very well. And he raised the caps a little bit. These are old numbers here, folks. Those numbers are full. Registered to player 110, it's now 136. We've opened up a few more spots in the M3 and the M2 division. So get yourself in there as fast as you can. They're not going to last long. We signed up five more teams today. So can't wait for that event. BZ Strix got some incredible trophies that we're going to be having for you folks as well. And it's just going to be one of the greatest, best events of the year. 27th running of the Texas State Dubs. Very proud to be a part of it. And uh, I, I highly recommend that if you want to play in this event, you get yourself signed up and ready to go because these spots are not going to last long. Now, that leads me to the gentleman that we have on this evening. Not very many gentlemen have been on my show three times in a row, three times, and he'll be making his third appearance. Uh, not only that, though, what he's done over this past year, I cannot wait to hear about it. So without further ado, Let's welcome to the show for the third time. And let's make sure before I do that, I can find and give him his right due. Where did it go? There it is, Mr. Robert Burge. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us again. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Robert, I'm doing fabulous, but I cannot be doing as well as you are. That's for dang sure. Congratulations on a wonderful year. We're about to get into that just a little bit, along with what maybe uh, you're looking forward to in the future. So are you ready to go? Because we're going to start this off with a new segment we like to call a little true or false. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's so it. sometimes these things are true. Sometimes these things are half true. Sometimes they may not be true at all. So what we're looking for is a little explanation and a little levity while we enjoy it, okay? True right. or false, you won the National Collegiate Championship in disc golf representing the Ohio State University. True or false? Absolutely false. They represented the University of Michigan. <laughs> Just so you know, I made sure that I got the right one for you. I don't know who photoshopped that Ohio State jersey that you're wearing there. I was pretty shocked to find that. But you know, nowadays with this fake news, you can never really trust anybody. So I had to go and make sure that that was the right one. But I did end up finding the right one. So you can explain to me the other gentleman you see in this picture as well and what's going on. So that picture was taken just after I tapped out on hole 18 during the individual competition. And um, I'm currently like um, the guy in the white hoodie was uh, one of my teammates that had hasn't played for very long, but he was one of my teammates that year. And the guy standing next to me who was caddying for me during that final round, I've played with, I played with as long as I was in Michigan and he's one of my better friends up there. And I wouldn't have been there without their support. Man, that's amazing. I love that shot. You can just <clears> see the, the, re the relief is almost, you can see it on your face right there. Uh, but let's just, while I got you on that Michigan I, I thing, tell the folks you have finally graduated from the UM. Is that true and or false? That is true. I graduated at the end of December this past year. You did what I did. I graduated in December as well when I graduated, which is kind of like that four and a half year plan, as some like to say. What did you end up graduating in? I graduated with a bachelor's of science in movement science, so kinesiology, as well as a minor in statistics. So this leads us to our next true and false question. You know, I don't know if you know who Coffeezilla is, but he's this kind of detective on the network who kind of brings up the fake gurus and these fake NIT guy, NFT guys, and he kind of exposes them for what they are. So I found a kind of disturbing picture, and I need you to tell me something, whether it's true or false. First, before I show the picture, true that the man in this picture is A, your dad, and B, the person or thing standing next to him is just a younger version of you, okay? True or false? So that is my dad uh, standing next to me, 
or standing next to his robot, which I think that specific robot, I think, was part of a project that um, goes into dangerous situations where people really shouldn't be going. Um, so it's meant to go where people, where it's too dangerous for people to go to help out. And I, I always enjoyed seeing his work, but that is my dad. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I know that your dad, so I think you got to have to, I'm not sure about that. That is not you because I've seen you play you. I've seen you play disc golf and it's quite amazing what you're doing. And also your dad as well being a robotic engineer designer. And yes, that was a $2 million robot. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken as well, but I'm telling you what, quite impressive that your dad was able to do that. I did have another picture, unfortunately, I cannot find it, but it was a picture of your father this year who had won an award and next to him are five young men. Of course, he's the only man without the mask on, but these five young men, I kept asking myself, why is it that your dad continues to want to go beat these young people in disc golf, true or false? Um, if I, I'm not sure what, um... Texas so there's State a few University images that it could be. Honestly. It was. I think most likely it was. So my dad teaches, um, or teaches. He volunteers at a club at a local middle school. He teaches classes, basically three times a week, and I think that image was him with basically his team that had won an award at a local competition. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But to me, it's just like, ah, can't your dad stop beating all these young kids? I mean, he's already good enough. He beats us old people all the time, too. But I look forward to seeing him in Texas States this year, doubles coming up. Now, enough about him and more about you. Now, I pulled up a couple pictures of you, and I've researched a few of these things. And I want you to tell me what is going through your mind and kind of walk us through the two pictures that you see that I'm about to show you, okay? So, Really, we're just trying to get in the, inside your mind. And I think these are two of the biggest events this year that I picked out that when I was following you that I was most impressed with. So kind of lead us through with the top one first. What's going through your mind right that moment on that top picture? That's a great question. <laughs> I think it was just pure relief to like be done with it because it was a tense final round, I will say, with... um. I forget his last name, but um, he was from the Rochester Institute of Technology. Evan was a great competitor. It was awesome playing with him. But that was kind of a moment where I was like, finally, <laughs> you know, I knew I could do it. And it was just like saying, you know, very, very thankful that I was able to pull it off. Okay. Now, the picture on the bottom it's just been the scuttlebutt, of course, around town. I think it was probably one of your biggest events this year. Can you walk us through what you were going through at that moment right there during that picture? So at that moment, I believe it was just after Simon had made his putt on hole four at the Des Moines Challenge during the playoff. Um, so we shook hands. We had we had a embrace, and it was it was awesome to to share that moment with him. And you know, it you know I was just happy to be a part of it. Really, you know, my mind was pretty much blank. I wasn't you know cursing the disc golf lords that I hit hit a stump. I wasn't you know sad that he didn't miss the putt. You know, it was you know good for him. But I'm I'm gonna make him earn it, and I did. And that's all I could do. So out of those two events, which you had to rank, which one was your favorite? I mean, I know the second one you didn't win, but let's really understand the moment of who you're playing with in the field you were in, which to you was really your favorite event right there. I think, so those two are definitely my two favorite events, I think of the year, but that second one with, with Simon and, and me is definitely the, sort of the pinnacle of my year, I think, regarding disc golf. Did you take something away from that event uh, moving forward? Did you see something after that in your game, maybe in your mental approach, maybe just in 
man, I, I can do this. What did, what did you take away from that? So what I took away was, you know, just trust the process, you know, being in college the last four years has been, you know, difficult to, to really balance everything. And so sometimes it's hard not seeing an insane amount of progress um, because I don't necessarily have the time no, to don't tell me I lost him. Why do I lose everybody? But Sorry, I lost you for a moment. Go ahead. So I think in that moment, it was, it was really a trust the process sort of moment where it's in the past, like while I was in college, I improved, but not nearly as much as I wanted to, I guess, during that time, as much as I knew I could. So that was that, you know, I can do this. And I, and when I start devoting all my time to it, I know I can, I can win some events and I'm just looking forward to the future and trusting, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah, I, I'm, I was fortunate enough to go away to school as well. And, and, and I mean, not in from the city I'm from. So I was able to be, you know, three, four hours away from where I lived to go to school. And the experience that I, I had away at school was amazing. I wouldn't have changed it for anything. And I know that you being at the University of Michigan, what a university to be at. Were you able to really, I mean, your field of choice, for, for God's sakes, is not an easy one either. Uh, to consider to say, hey, I'm just going to go have a great time at college when not only that the field that you chose, but also the extracurricular activity you chose both take a large amount of time. Did you find that you were still able to enjoy college? Were you able to get that college experience? And if so, kind of talk us through that a little bit. So everyone always, or I say everyone, a lot of the stigma around the college experience seems to be like finding friends and like going out and some people party every night some people stay in every night and that's you know it's that finding what you want to do and being part of the ultimate team who I'm also very very thankful for being a part of you know I'm I'm very close to them still being out of college and they're I became really good friends with the disc golf team with the ultimate team i have people now that you know i can rely on and that i can call good friends and i'm very thankful for it you know it was hard not i was just happy to be able to stay consistent like not have my rating you know dip hard because i couldn't spend time doing it but just you know get through college and just enjoy the process again and it's i think i I wouldn't change anything about my college experience, given the chance. That's awesome, man. I mean, because you never get it back. My grandma used to always tell me, she said, kid, have fun while you're young, because you'll never be able to get that back. So I'm so glad you were able to do that. And it sounds like you did. I mean, obviously, being able to play on the disc golf team and the ultimate team as well. I love team camaraderie. I played sports my whole life. That's kind of the reason why I do this that I do now as well. It's just to keep inside that same kind of banter back and forth with a group of core people that I really do enjoy being around. And as I always call it a little fellowship that I find out on the disc golf course. Now, here, here at the Fling Show, we've been fortunate enough to have you on. But not only just to have you on, we got to follow you and around you around. Um, doing a flick off, even though it didn't really turn into a flick off, but a really, it was a one-on-one -on -one challenge against you and a new teammate. And I lead, I say that to, to ask this, you had some big changes over the season. Uh, you changed some teams. Uh, can you kind of walk us through your thought process on what A, made you change teams and B, what you're looking forward to the team that you're on now? So I think starting off with a little bit of you know why I changed yes um so just to outline Lone Star in general I know you know there's so many people around Texas that are sponsored by him and it's yeah and it's it's just so cool because it is a team environment you know it doesn't feel like it's a bunch of individuals necessarily it's like if you need something from a certain area you can post about it and someone will get back to you and it feels like a community it doesn't feel as much as of a bunch of individuals coming together as as much as it does like a team if that makes sense 
Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I completely agree. And and sometimes I, I might equate it with this is, is some of the larger manufacturers, I'm not going to call them out by name. It's kind of like being with Nike, right? I mean, Nike has a bunch of star athletes, right? All over, all over, but it's not necessarily a team. You know, it's just they have star athletes. And I think that sometimes teams don't have that, especially in this community. But I think Lone Star has shown that that's been extremely important to them. And I think by building that community, like you said, you can go a lot of places outside of the state of Texas and still people will respond to you, help you out and take care of you. And that's one thing that I really enjoy because Mikey Siebert, Siebert and I got to go up to Worlds this year in Peoria. And just amazing the community when you get out there. So, so glad that you uh, came on board with Lone Star. Just amazing. Uh, I got to hear about it when, you know, in its infancy when no one could talk about it and I had to keep it under wraps. And I was the one just saying, I said, if you get that young man right there, he's going to be one of your best ambassadors because I really have always really appreciated how you have always carried yourself. And, and I'm going to give your parents, at least your dad, since I've got to meet him a few times, some props for that because he is such a nice person and you seem to, to almost have the same um, similarities, I would say. Uh, and the same personalities because you're just a great ambassador to the sport. And I love how you carry yourself. And we got to see that firsthand uh, following you for that round with Chandler Kramer as well, just to watch your, your professionalism and the way that you carried yourself and your shot process and your thoughts in it. It was just a pleasure to see. Now I'm, I'm a, I say that to say this because a few of the boys in the back, I'll mention that Terry Dillard and Travis Dillard, we have a little dollar bets going on on who they, who I think is going to do the best on the team. I mean, it's quite an amazing group of, 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 of talented players out there for sure. But no pressure. And I don't think that you'll take it this way anyway. But my pick was you. Um, I said that I thought that you had the most upside uh, of the team members. And, uh, and I'm going to stick by that. And that's my bet. But just so you know, out of the three people who bet, two of them bet on you. I, I really appreciate it, you know, and that's, going back you know it's part of why I love Lone Star is you know it feels like a family and you can do things like that you know and it's it's just such a friendly like family environment and I love every second of it all right well that and I know I led you this earlier this evening and so we'll kind of close it with this before we let you go because I know that you got things to do and people to see and, and other things to do besides be here on the fling show but we do appreciate you coming on but while we do that, I want to catch up with what you have in your bag now, because obviously, boy, has it changed. And I want to kind of get your thoughts on a few of your discs, but let's, let's kind of go over what's in your bag now. So I will have an in the bag coming out soon through Lone Star, so I'll save a lot of the sort of smaller details for that. But as of right now, putting with Jackrabbit, which is a little more overstable than I'm used to, but... I'm making the transition pretty well. I went out at McDade and didn't miss a circle one putt today, so it's going well. Um, and then, you know, I'm loving the harpoon, walker, in love with the mockingbird. Love the mockingbird so much. Uh, I threw it on at least a third of the holes out there, and it, it just flies so, so well. Um, and then... You know, I'm also sponsored by Hooligan Disc, or will be, and I'm throwing the Yeet, which is very, very similar to the Warbird. And that's one of my go-tos just for consistent, overstable shots. Mm -hmm. Well, man, that's just awesome. Awesome. But I did, and I'm sorry I said this is the last question, but I did have one last question for you is, is kind of what are your, have you set any goals for next year? And kind of walk us through what you're going to be doing as far as the Disc Golf Pro Tour and some events we may be able to follow you, follow you in coming up soon. So starting with the second question first, um, I will be playing every single event on the Pro Tour regard, unless I have some injury or I need a rest week. I will be playing as many tournaments as I possibly can on the Pro Tour. That being said, I am, you know, I'm obviously goal oriented. I want to play the best I can. That's something that I've always 
held dear to me. It's why I get up and practice every day is I want to be the best I can be at this sport. But I also know that other people are doing the exact same thing. And similar to what happened at Des Moines, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I just have to keep playing my game and trusting the process. And, you know, good things will happen out of it. Man, that's awesome. Well, you, you can guarantee you got fans over here, that's for sure, who will be paying attention to what you're doing, reveling in your success and understanding during your struggles as well. But we'll definitely be giving you all the support we can. And we really appreciate you coming on. And, and, I, and I just want you to know, we did have a winner for a signed disc from you. So I'm going to have to get that from you. <laughs> and uh, we'll get that sent to the, uh, to the gentleman as well. He picked your silhouette. The question was, is before I even released the picture on that, I said, who is this three-time uh, person on the fling show, professional disc golfer? And he picked you out. What's funny is, is once one picked you, it was a landslide on different websites too. So it wasn't the same one. So they know what you look like, whether they can see your face or not. I don't know if that's good or bad, but they do. Uh, but I'm going to get with you on that as well so we can get that dish shipped to him and I'll take care of all that uh, as far as the cost as well too, Robert. But I just want to make sure that uh, we get that to this young man because he he supports you and he supports the Fling Show as well. So once again, thank you, Robert. I really appreciate it. But before we go, do you have anybody that you'd like to thank? Any family member sponsors? Floor is yours, sir. I mean, obviously I have to thank my parents, especially my dad for getting me into this. You know, it's it's always a little surreal being like, yeah, I'll be on the pro tour next year or this year, I guess, starting in about a month. And it's, it's so cool. And then I just want to thank all my sponsors, drive bags, Lone Star discs, um, hooligan discology. I'm going to forget someone big, big country beef jerky and other look at my Instagram. I tag them all. Um, but you know, and lastly, I just want to thank you, you know, for having me on again. I really appreciate you doing this and, and spreading, spreading disc golf. Man, Robert, it's my pleasure. It, it has been a pleasure. And like I said, it, it's fun to watch uh, such a nice young man. I look forward to seeing your dad at Texas State Dubs. I know that you're not going to be able to be there this year. You said that you're going to be, uh, uh, I think, on tour playing an event, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so good luck to you there. I'll be watching from afar and uh, really, really appreciate you coming on. Hopefully we'll be able to get you on again throughout the year this year and, and uh, talk to you again, if that sounds good. OK, absolutely. Just shoot me a message and we'll figure it out. Oh, I hope I didn't just lose him. Gosh, dang it. Sometimes I get tied up. But once again, we'd like to thank Robert for coming on this evening. And uh, oh, he's there again. But thanks, you, Robert. I really appreciate you coming on. Hope to get you on again during the year, sir. Absolutely. Just shoot a message and we'll figure it out. You bet. And like I said, I'll hit you up on that disc to get and I'll take care of all the uh, the necessities on that as well. OK. All right. Thank you. All right, Robert, you have a great night. Peace, sir. <clears throat> oh, you. man, we are so lucky here. I mean, to tell you right now. Just really, really lucky after showing you well in the prickly pear, we had eight of those girls on our show previously. We've got and and, and I didn't even get to mention and, and really throw out what Robert won. He won rookie of the year in the PDGA in 2022. Let's really just think about that rookie of the year. My goodness gracious, um, we could all only hope. Uh, to be as successful and, and to be a, as humble at the same time as Mr. Burge is. And like I said, we look forward to see him playing this year. But before we go, folks, I just want to make sure that you all know, got a few more spots for that Texas State Dubs tournament, Huntsville, Texas, Shawshank Penitentiary. You have the uh, age protected, which is going to be on the 11th and the 12th. Plenty of spaces open there in a few divisions. Um, and then don't forget, we have the M4 divisions open for the first time on that 11th and 12th as well. I thought we'd have a few more folks signing up. So let's see you guys get out there and see if that you novices can get out there and finally have a chance without all those real rec players that are really intermediate players playing as well. And of course, on the 4th and the 5th, we've got the um, open, not the open, but we have the MA1 
two and three fields and both the FA one, two and three fields as well. And that's at Shawshank Penitentiary Disc Golf Course. It's going to be a blast. I cannot wait, cannot wait to see the people that have already signed up. I look forward to seeing you all this year. And once again, we want to thank our sponsors. I uh, cannot thank them enough. And I want to make sure that we continue to thank them. And the only way I can do that is to make sure that you know who these people are. So we made a small video that we were going to play on the show. So every week until we have the ease. If you know some of our sponsors, please patronize them. I think that's the word. It may not be patronized. Maybe patron something of them, please. And take care of them. Show them that you care about them as well as much as they show us. But I just want to show you again our wonderful sponsors before we go this.